Hey guys, this is Karthik. In this video, we'll talk about a cool dynamic programming problem that comes from the book CLRS. The problem is assembly line scheduling. So imagine that you own a car manufacturing plant and there are n machines in the plant that are used to create a car. Okay, manufacture or produce a car. So call these machines M1, M2 and so on till Mn. There are n such machines. Each machine is used to produce one and only one part and your raw material should start from here and go one by one through the machines to get your car ready over here okay so these are the end machines that you own at the moment and these are arranged in line as your work as your as your company grows you buy another line of machines so you have another line now and raw material might enter this line now and this line can also be used to produce a car so let me call this machine 1 from line 1 and let me call this machine 1 from line 2. Then this is machine 2 from line 1 and this is machine 2 from line 2. Similarly, this is machine n from line 1 and this is machine n from line 2. Now the thing is that you can use either of the lines to produce your car. It takes some time E1 for the raw material to enter into line 1 whereas it takes some other time E2 if you want to put the raw material in line 2. The ith machine of line 1 and the ith machine of line 2 both are used to produce the same part pi. Both of these produce the same part pi. However, the time taken by these two machines to produce pi might be different. It takes ti1 for mi1 to produce pi whereas it takes ti2 for mi2 to do the same. Now what you would like to do is you would like to find out the minimum time in which you can produce your car using the raw material. So at the moment it might seem that you have two options either go through line 1 or go through line 2 and then whichever is better you use that line to produce your car in the minimum possible time. Now the thing is that you can actually switch from one of the lines to the other line. So imagine that you've reached uh, let's say you produce the part 1 using M11. From this point you can switch to the line, line 2 like this. Because you, have, you already have the part 1, you go from machine M11 to M22 to produce the part 2. It's actually possible to switch between the two lines. However, this comes at a cost. The cost to go from line 1 to line 2 over here would be time taken to go from machine 1 to machine 2. Or let me just use a better terminology here. Since T12 actually means what is the time taken by machine 1 of line 2 to produce part 1. Let me say that I am shifting the, uh, the partially constructed car from line 1 to line 2, right? And at what machine I am? I am at machine M11, right? So the shift is obviously going to be line uh, from line 1 to line 2. And I am currently at machine 1. So time taken to shift from machine 1 to second line. That could be a good way to actually model this time. And then similarly, this time would be the time taken to shift from machine 1 to line 1. Time taken to shift from machine 1 to line 1. Also, you can assume the time taken to go from one machine to the other in the same line is negligible. So let it be 0. Okay. Then SI1 would mean that I was at the ith machine and I'm switching to line 1 which automatically means that I was at the line ith machine of line 2 so that would be I was at MI2 right similarly SI2 would mean that I was uh, that I'm shifting from machine I to line 2 or I was at MI1 currently and I'm going to MI plus 1 2 okay now with this much in place we would like to find out what is the minimum time in which you can produce a car now all good, we need an example, okay? So let's see an example. Let's say there are four machines in line one and line two each. Maybe it takes some time to enter this and this, similarly some exit times. It might be that the best possible way to produce your car in the minimum time is to enter over here, then produce part one using the time of this machine, then go here, and maybe then switch to this car here, 
produce the part three in the line two, and then maybe again go back to line one and produce the fourth part using this machine, and finally your car gets ready over here uh, using some ready time R1, similarly ready time R2 here. So you'd like to find out what is the minimum time in which you can use your raw material to get the car ready. Take some examples, take different values of these uh, entry times, exit times and the time taken to shift from a line to the other, also the time taken by a machine to produce the part. Hopefully the problem statement is clear, if there is any doubt you can definitely ask me in the comments. I'll also put a dis link in the description to the problem statement if there is anything that is not clear yet. So now let's think about the solution. So I see that there is a line L1 over here. And there is a line L2 over here. Okay, now your raw material. Initially, I am here at the raw material. I have two options. Either put this raw material in the line 1 using time E1, or take time E2 and put the raw material in line 2. That's, that's the only two options I have initially. Then let's see what happens. If I take time E1, then I would be standing at this machine wanting to produce the part P1 and then I would like to use the minimum time to go from this position that is the position machine M11 and reach this end point over here. So I would like to find out what is the minimum time to go from this machine through all the machines in whatever manner to reach this point here. Let me call this go from. Okay or maybe even go. So go from M11 to the end point here, to the end. Okay, what is the minimum time that you can take to go from this machine M11, machine one of line one to the end to and like producing all the parts of course. The other option that I had was take time E2 and then I'm standing at this machine from here, whatever path I choose to produce my car, be it going here or there or whatever. I'd like to minimize that. So I would like to go from M12, that is machine one of line two, to the end point using as little time as possible, producing the entire car. These are the only two options I have when I'm standing at this point. So I don't I should not think of too much about what happens later on, where to go. I should think about what happens right now. Right now I have two options: either this or this. And of course, they'll choose the one which actually helps me produce the car in smaller time. So minimum among these two options. So let's expand this go from thing now. If I was able to go uh, evaluate what is go from, first of all, let's define what is go from. I'll name it go for the sake of um, me not writing way too much. So go machine I of maybe line one to the end point. Let's define what, what I mean by this. So this might mean what is the minimum time in which I can go from minimum time in which I can go from the ith machine of line one to the end point while producing all the parts of the car. This is go mi1 end. This is the definition. <clears throat> Similarly, mi mi2 end would be what is the minimum time in which I can go from the ith machine of line 2 till the end point? Whichever path I choose afterwards does not matter. But the definition is that what is the minimum time taken to produce your car starting from line mi2 till the end. Okay. Let's see how we can actually write a recurrence now. What would be go mi1 end? First of all, I will be taking some time to produce the ith part. So the time taken to produce the ith part would be time taken by, by the ith machine of line 1 to produce the part P1, that is Ti1. And then I have two options. From this machine Mi1, I either go to the machine Mi plus 1, comma 1, IE plus 1 at machine of line 1, or I shift from the ith machine to the line 2. I said, these are the two options I have. So let's just see the two options. So one option is that I, I take zero time and I reach this machine. And then I would like to find out what is the minimum time that I can take starting from this machine to reach the end. 
that would be by definition go of mi plus 1 comma 1 comma n so what is the minimum time to produce your car starting from machine mi plus 1 of machine of line 1 and going till the end right the other option that i have is that i shift shift from the machine i to the line 2 si2 this is the time taken to do that and now what is the minimum time to go from machine i plus 1 of line 2 till the end these are the only two options i have right now and of course my overall go mi1 command is going to be ti1 plus whatever is the minimum of these two options because i'm trying to minimize the time so i already have a recurrence now think about some base cases what could be a valid base case in this problem so when i'm at the last uh, last machine over here uh, mn of line 1 the nth machine of line 1 what is the time taken to go from here till the end it's going to be time taken to produce the nth part that is tn plus 1 plus the exit uh, the ready time here rn oh sorry r1 and that's it there's going to be a base case so go from mn1 command is going to be this and go from mn2 is going to be tn2 plus r2 so that's it guys that's the recurrence that's the base case now you guys might want to see some code and i'll show that to you as well so guys there is the code i declare the array, the array go n plus one three i'm using one based indexing over here so that our discussion is in alignment with uh, the solution and the explanation now i set the base cases what is the time taken to go from the nth machine of line one till the end point that's going to be produce the nth part using tn1 time that is time taken by that machine to produce that part plus the exit time r1 to go from the last machine on line 1 to the point where your car is ready similarly go n2 is the time taken by the nth machine of line 2 to produce that given part plus r2 to reach the exit now i look through and use the recurrence to build the go for every machine of every line so starting from the n-1 machine till the first machine if I'm talking about a machine in line 1, the time taken to produce the part by that machine is going to be TM, TM1 or TM2, either of these, depending upon what machine I'm talking about, plus either, let's say I'm, let's say I'm talking about line 1, either I go to the next machine in line 1, then I would be thinking about, hey, what's the minimum time to go from machine number plus 1 of line 1 till the end point, and nothing extra is added because the time taken to go from this machine to the next machine in the same line is negligible or I shift from the ith machine to line 2 if I do that then I'll, I'll take this extra over time of shifting lines and then I would be like okay what's the minimum time to go from machine number m plus 1 till this in the line 2 okay so this one similarly if I'm talking about a machine in line 2 First of all, time taken to produce a part by that machine and then I can either go to the next machine in the same line that is line 2 or I can shift from the ith machine to line 1 and then I would be like hey what's the minimum time to go from uh, the, the next machine of line 1 to the end point that's it that's what the code is doing here in the end I would be like hey either go either take even time and enter line one and see what's the minimum time to go from machine one of line one till the end point or take time take e2 time to enter line two and see what's the minimum time to go from machine one of line two so that's it that's what this entire code is doing this is big of n in time and big of n in space so hopefully you like this video if there is any doubt you can ask me in comments also make sure that you like share and subscribe to the channel so that i can keep bringing useful content for you all bye